A number of folks have asked me about my sheet metal bending brake. So in this video I'm going to show you how I built it, how it works, and what I think could be done to improve it. Coming up. So this whole thing was built from repurposed steel and offcuts I had floating around in the shop. I think about the only new pieces I bought were a few bolts and nuts. Um, I love visiting junkyards. <laughs> so a lot of this comes out of a junkyard, actually. Like the frame here, <laughs> I picked that up in a junkyard. It was all rusty, but it kind of looked like it could be handy, so I picked it up. It was a little too long, I modified it slightly. Very basic structure. This one is built from angle bar. This is about, what is this, inch and a half. One's running across is one inch. You, you can make this from square tubing as well, or whatever you have. The essence of this thing is, or are three pieces of this angle bar. I'll show you now. There's one here, there's one here, and there's one in there. They measure about 90 wide, 90 millimeters wide on the flanges. Thickness is 8 millimeter. They're 1.35 meters long, so that means that I can get a four foot sheet of, play, uh, of steel through here. Um, so I can bend a full sheet along its width. Let me take this top piece off so you can see what's going on inside. I'm also going to take this off so we can see inside there. Right, so this is the one piece of angle bar. Here's the other piece. I've welded in a plate right here that is drilled and tapped. So I can screw on my, so we call it the hinge plate, hinge plate, which is also just made from a piece of the same angle bar. So this piece is attached to the stand. It's immovable, it can't move, it stays like that. This length of 16 millimeter round bar, 5 8 inches, is welded onto this piece of angle bar, that's the movable piece. So it uh, will rotate through my inch plate, like so, and then that bolts into place up there. So this is a really important part. I've cut the corner out on this angle bar so that this edge here lines up exactly with the center line of this pin. That's important to do. So here's the view from the side. If you look carefully, you can see my cutout that I did on the corner there. And I cut it deep enough so that that center point lines up with this line. And obviously with this line. So that this center point lines up with the edge of the angle bar. There, that edge of the angle bar that's out of focus. Camera is distorting things a little bit, but it's lining up with the center line of the pin. My picture is worth a thousand words. So here's what I'm talking about. There's my angle bar section. This is my pin. In my case, it's a 16 millimeter the diameter. So you would want to cut in half of that, eight millimeters your cut, eight millimeters your cut, so that the center line of the pin intersects with that line and that line. 
So I've provided some clearance here for that pin. And when I now put the hinge plate in its place, so you can see I've got clearance there. And I've also positioned them as close to each other as I possibly could, so there's hardly any gap here. So I didn't want any play on my hinge point here, so I took some care in drilling that hole, so that there's no play here, and I've just got a nice fit. That's how my two pieces sit with the hinge plate removed, the one that sits here. So they are they basically tight against each other and obviously level through here as well. So this piece of angle bar that actually forms the backbone of this thing, I've welded it to this flat bar here. I've just installed a spacer piece here and now it's bolted to the stand. So I could actually take the whole thing off and mold it, bolt it to a workbench if I wanted to. Okay, so, so far, we turn through that hinge point, that's what happens, right? Now the third length of angle bar comes into play. I've even cleaned it with a damp rag for you. <laughs> In fact, I'm going to wipe the whole thing down with my damp rag. Then it just looks nice and new again. So on each end of this piece, I've got an off-cut piece of that same angle bar welded on, like this. The hole is drilled through there for this M16 threaded bar. M16 is 5 eighths. So then what I've got here, there's my length of ready bar or threaded bar. I've welded a simple handle on the top. And then it's got the double nut on each side so that you can adjust it then and lock it. So my handle is just a piece of one inch flat bar welded onto the end of this ready bar here. This side I've got a nice long bolt that goes through a piece of pipe. And then it's just uh, drilled and tapped there with a lock nut on the bottom. There's this hole, 16 millimeter hole drilled through here. And on the bottom I've got a 16mm M16 nut welded on. So that this thing can now screw in there. So I can now raise this top piece up and down. And obviously I can then also clamp my piece of metal down. Same deal on both sides, eh? And this business then, so that piece of flat bar is welded onto this. This little piece has got, it has been drilled and tapped. And this is how I can adjust this. There's a little bit of play on this, as there will be when it's loose. Obviously when you tighten it down, it doesn't have play anymore. And this just locates it, so that it lines up on the front side. I'll show you now what I mean. I wanted to be able to adjust the edge of this top piece in relation to the bottom piece, as you can see there. So that bolt in the back allows me to do that. Let's see if this is going to work. I'm looking down at the break from the sky, I bend my piece up, so that's where my bar will go to. There's my piece of plate that I've just bent through 90 degrees, and I don't know if you can see this, but down there should be a little gap between the edge of this and the edge of this bar. I don't know if this is explaining it. I better make a drawing, man. Here's my high-tech drawing. That's the bottom angle bar. This is the one that swings to bend my material. That's my material. This is the top one holding it down. I need a gap there. 
the thickness of the material. So if I bend one millimeter material, that gap should be at least one millimeter. That bolt allows me to fine tune that adjustment. Hopefully it makes sense now. Okay, and of course you gotta have a handle. This is just off cut stuff I had lying around. So I welded on these two pieces of square tubing, piece of pipe in between for a nice handle. The stiffness or rigidity of these sections are important because if you bend a wide piece of material, they could actually flex and cause you some problems. Um, in my case, I'm using this angle bar, it's 8 millimeters thick and 90 by 90 the flanges, so that's quite strong. I mostly work with 1 millimeter or 18 gauge, no problems. I've done some 2 millimeter material as well, also no problems. I've never tried 3 mil, 1 eighth of an inch. I think on a wide section it will not do it. So it's best to make this from as strong a piece of material you can find. Um, it is possible to brace it, to give it additional stiffness in the middle here. Um, there is a nice way to do it. Let me make a drawing of it quickly. So this is how I would do a brace. Let me explain my drawing. This is your angle bar section. This is a piece of round bar. Can be half inch. Weld it on there and weld it on there. And there's a piece of pipe, a section of pipe is welded to it. Here I've got a bolt welded to my angle bar section as well. And the bolt sticks into the piece of pipe. So what happens if I tighten this nut? I'm going to start pushing down here. So I'm going to create some tension in this bar. So I can adjust it with the nut and pre-tension it and then prevent it from flexing like that. So it's tensioning it down all the time. So to bend my piece of plate, I don't use both handles. If it's a small piece, the handle on that side is down and tight already. I just wind this one up a little bit, put my plate in, go down until it's nice and tight. And there we have it. Piece of 18 gauge plate, one millimeter thick. I'm just going to let it stick out by about 10 millimeters or three eighths of an inch. Clamp it down. No problem to bend even quite a narrow lip, as you can see here. This is two millimeters thick. Let's give it a shot. As you can see, it's no problem whatsoever. So I can make myself a little channel. By first doing that, I've got it sticking out by maybe half an inch again. Tighten it down. Got that now. And I'm going to stick it in like that. There you go. So you can make up a section with two 90 degree corners that meet, if that makes any sense to you. I think you'll not see now what I mean. Let me first bend this one. And 
now you will need this slot here so that it can go through like that tighten back down I just want to line it up get that. So my only criticism of the brake so far is this radius of the bend here. As you can see it's quite large. It doesn't bother me so far. It doesn't look bad. It looks nice. But if you want a tighter radius um, I need to make some changes. And this radius is determined by the edge of the Angle bar here. So the standard profile of this angle bar section means that on this edge there's very much of a rounded profile and this is what determines the radius of my bend. So that's what I'm talking about. This is what the profile looks like along the edge of the angle bar. So when I bend my plate around it, it follows that radius. So the only way to improve this would be to basically Cut the piece off there, so that we end up with something like this. Then we'll get a better radius here, or a smaller radius, rather. Um, it's not as easy as one would think, because you need to remove it all along the length of this thing. And this edge also needs to remain straight. So the obvious way would be with a milling machine. Um, yeah, which is going to be quite a story. <laughs> I've been thinking of other ways in which to do it. It is possible. It's going to entail a lot of work to ensure that it remains straight along that edge. So I'm going to live with it like this for now. This is another option. Is to get a piece of flat bar that can sit underneath that. Because by doing this, again, I'm making that radius around which the plate bends much smaller. I would imagine it needs to be at least 10 millimeters thick, 3 eighths. And obviously minimum width needs to be the same as this. So it's quite a substantial piece of material. <laughs> um, I'll keep my eyes open in the junkyard. <laughs> but I'm not going to buy that. That's going to be quite expensive. So I think you will agree that my bending brake works well enough. It cost me very little money, sure, it did cost me some time. I think time is actually quite relative. If you enjoy building things and the satisfaction of making your own tools, doesn't matter then, does it? Many people waste time in various ways, in front of a TV <laughs> or whatever. So yeah. I think that's pretty much the story of my bending break. Thanks for watching and joining me here in my workshop. I appreciate it. I'll see you guys in another video. Have a good one.